Hi, in this video, we will be installing R, the programming language itself, which is a separate software from what we call R Studio, which is actually a way of interacting with, visualizing, and even extending the functions of R. So they're actually two separate softwares, but they work together to allow data scientists and biologists to do powerful uh, data science and powerful just analyses without being perfect computer scientists. So these are very powerful tools, but to get them, we need to download them onto our computer first. So to do that, I'm going to start off by getting the R program itself. So for that, I'm going to type in just CRAN R. I could probably just have typed in R, but, but CRAN is a website that actually allows us to accumulate all sorts of different resources, archive different versions, and just distribute this program, which is open source and, and kind of collectively developed to everyone. So to do that, I'm going to just go to this website. Um, I have three options. This video is for installing on a Mac operating system. So if you are using a different system, just jump out of this, go to the other video for Windows, or go down to the text for installing on a Linux system. So here I'm going to select Mac OS. And at this point, you do need to know a little bit about your computer. So for most students, uh, they are downloading this first package, which is for at least, and that's the big qualifier, at least Mac operating system 10.13 and higher, or, and a Intel 64-bit build. And it's that latter requirement that where I see students who are struggling uh, with this install, that's where it comes from. And unfortunately, it's not always obvious, and so it's better for you right now to go check and make sure if you're not confident that your system is this type of build. Um, what we're looking for is Apple, Silicon, ARM64, or even other older builds. So anything that's 32-bit uh, will need to use a older version, or anything that is um, one of these other architectures will need to just keep scrolling down until they find something that applies their operating system. So in order to find your operating system's information, we go to the Apple menu. So I'm going to go to About This Mac. And for this computer and this operating version, uh, all of the information is immediately viewable. You may, however, need to click on System Report and maybe even go into Hardware Overview, depending on the version that you're using. However, here uh, I have all the information I need. It is a version 12.3. So that's above that minimum that we saw. And the processor is an Intel. And so I know that it is the appropriate processor. Had you seen something that said ARM64 or Apple Silicon, that's going to be kind of the other big category of students. Um, if it said something else, you'll just need to keep scrolling down. Maybe even talk to your TA or your instructor if you are concerned that you did not get the correct version installed. In this case, I'm going to download this file. I've already done this, so I'm not going to click on it here, but that's all you need to do. So the next step is to download, oh, and there's a couple of things to mention about this. There are notes attached to each one of these, and you should read through it. It may not all make sense, so uh, you, you may not understand that uh, if you want to use X11 libraries, you probably don't, but that's a way of doing remote computing on your system. Um, but if you do, you may need to install certain um, other software. Uh, for this one, there's not really a whole lot else you need to install. However, it does mention that in order to compile R packages from source, you may need to download a certain tool. And so if that applies to you, uh, you may need to just come back here and kind of do some debugging. But for the most part, few students are going to encounter that issue. So the next step is to go and install RStudio. So if I just head back 
to my search engine, I can easily find our studio by just searching for it. We have provided links down below this video though, if you would like to use those. So I'm just going to go to the R Studios website. Uh, you'll notice that R Studio is changing its name. This was announced yesterday as of the time of filming this video. So that may change in the near future. Um, but for right now, we're just going to download the R Studio IDE, the free version. One of the nice things about this tool that has allowed it to really become uh, the predominant language used in uh, just across broadly uh, biology. So in this case, it automatically suggests the version of our studio for our Mac. It's worth checking just to make sure it seems appropriate given this information that it's presenting to you. I haven't actually had any students have issues with installing our studio. So mostly you should just be able to click this link and you'll get served the correct version. Um, but do you know look at it just to make sure, especially if you had to choose a different version of R. So with that, we're going to go install that software. So I'm going to navigate to my downloads folder. And can, oh, I need to download. Well, let's see, it wasn't in my downloads folder. So if you're not sure where your downloads went, you may need to make sure they downloaded to a location you can find them. Uh, a handy tool in the download section of Chrome, though, is just to click show in Finder. So now that we have that apparently downloaded to the desktop, I'm just going to open up these files. I'm going to start with R since it's kind of dependent on R to run R Studio. And we're going to go through with pretty much the default settings. It will kind of walk you through some of the things that you may need or issues that may come up if your computer is going to have some issues. Uh, because I don't know your computer, I can't give you like bespoke instructions at this step. But most of the time, you should just be able to click through um, and be successful. In the end, we can test it by trying to open up the software, and if it runs, it's mostly working. Um, and later on in the class, if you start to run into issues, that's when you can reach out to a TA or an instructor. So make sure you go through and agree to all of the uh, appropriate information. Ah, it's telling I need to agree here. <laughs> I understand. Uh, so it's going to tell us how much space it's going to install. I'm just going to choose the default installation location. Obviously, you could change that if you wish to by clicking Customize or Change Install Location. This point, you may need to use your uh, admin privileges to install this. If you do not have admin privileges, I would suggest that this is a very important tool for this course and it's worth communicating with your system administrator to get this installed. It's a very common resource for people to get installed. So with that, I'm just going to type in this password. And there we are. So R is um, installing, one thing just to know about R, it is a, a computing language that is kind of easily able to be understood. And that's one of its main benefits is that for biologists, it allows us to use something closer to the common English that we speak and not necessarily something that is very syntax dependent and and you have to just be a little bit more of an expert um, in computer science in order to use. So we try to make it as user-friendly as possible. So part of that is installing our studio. So our studio is going to allow us to actually interact with R in a uh, more powerful way. So again, this may have changed how it um, looked on your computer, uh, depending on your version. And so now we have our studio installed. 
we can see that the current version of R at the top left corner is the version of R that we just installed. So if you'd had a previous version of R installed and you were simply upgrading this, uh, it, it, it behooves you to check to make sure that that did occur successfully. Um, if it did not, you may need to go into some of the options and change how it was installed. Um, so that would be under That would be under not in this version of our studio, apparently. Um, so I'll, uh, we'll attach something down below that helps you change the version if you need to. Uh, that is actually something that they've changed in some versions of our studio is that you can no longer change on the fly what version of R you're using. Uh, so that might just be app applied to Mac versions of our studio, unfortunately. Um, in the end though, like you can just check here to make sure it's using the correct version. So if you look at the top left of your screen, that should say the current version of R that you just installed, uh, where it says R 4.2.1. Uh, and so if that says your current version, then you did great. Um, if it says an older version, then that means you need to go uh, online and check to see how to switch to a newer version of R for your system. Uh, that'll just vary depending on the system you're using and the version of R and R Studio that you manage to download. So with that, thank you so much. I hope that helped. Uh, this has been Dr. Nolan Bentley. Thank you.